Thank you for listening to the Tatnus Podcast on the Tatnus Co. Network. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. A Mercedes kind of sentiment, luxury, and trust in me to honor the free we all should be in. See my sons out burst into yin and yang, right and left, me and What's up, you guys? Welcome to the Tatnus Podcast. My guest today is a comedian who is a friend of mine, and she's great. Love her to death. We had a great conversation. She's funny as hell. And uh, what can I say, man? It's probably This is probably the only show that you're ever going to have in your rotation that will hit you with terms like shit like a buffalo. <laughs> only on my show, goddammit. Oh my god, I don't know, conversations just, they, they go that way sometimes, especially when you're dealing with comedians, so here she is, Jamie Tharney, funny as fuck, check her out, hope you dig it. I'm Jamie Tharney and I'm going all in for Boss's Best Comedian of 2020. And I'm going to show anyone that thinks I'm second-guessing myself that I'm the greatest ever. You don't like the prestige. You don't like the notoriety I've achieved. You don't like that I have more boobs than most of you have friends. Custom-made brother, Jamie Tharney. There's only one. I'm the woman that's making it possible. In Sioux City, they girls call me cool. In Omaha, the girls go woo. And in Sioux Falls, they say, whoa, daddy, there goes the man. And we all know to be the man, you have to beat the man. And I'm coming for you, Zach Dresch. And I'm coming for you, Andrew Kerner. And I'm coming for you, Chris Fryer. And I'm coming for you, Jerry Irby. Woo! First thing I noticed is you flat out went fucking full on Ric Flair on motherfuckers. And that's what <laughs> got my attention. I was like, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I've never seen a comedian go there. And I was like, that's, that's fucking unique. And I mm-hmm. loved it. So right away, yeah, I, awesome. you know, right off the bat, I was like, this is fucking cool. Um, so that's going to be, you know, like the highlight for me, I think, is just how hilarious that was. Oh, because- awesome. I've never seen that done before. And I was like, damn, right at the playbook, man. <laughs> These motherfuckers. <laughs> so did you take it further than that? Did you like start like chopping motherfuckers and shit? <laughs> if they don't laugh. Well, so I had planned on doing um, a show that was like, um, like wrestling themed comedy showcase. Awesome. And be- yeah, cause I really, I just, I love wrestling. Um, I used to wrestle in, uh, in Florida. I was uh, trained by uh, Jay Lethal. I don't know if you know who that is. And um, so anyway, I really wanted to sort of like um, mesh comedy with uh, wrestling because I think a lot of comedians are also pro wrestling fans. I have found that to be the case a lot. And um, because it's kind of the same vein of being silly and um, and kind of presenting something to the audience, you know, sort of like, uh, you know, like you're doing spots when you're doing jokes, you're just, it's the same thing as doing a spot. Right. So I, I have this kind of, uh, this line I say where I wish um, stand-up comedy was more like professional wrestling. You know, if somebody did a really awesome joke, you could all chant, this is awesome, <laughs> you know? And then if somebody starts to bomb, you can start yelling, you fucked up, you <laughs> fucked up. You know, I just, I really want a show that has that sort of um, audience participation, yeah. you know, I think that would be, that would be sort of, that would be badass, you know, just the it, whole wrestling theme. It has to work both ways though. Right. Like, if they don't laugh, you get to like slap a figure four on them or some shit. Well, like that'd be yeah, good. Yeah. I want to see well, that. You can totally hand. go heel. Right. Yeah. You, know, you totally go heel and just start just ragging on them, you know? Yeah just a steel chair to the back because somebody didn't find your shit funny. 
Right, it, right. It, it's actually really funny because uh, my MMA career started by going to a gym that Santino Morello owns. All right, on. And um, so that's kind of hilarious that we have this weird, like, you know, parallel. Yeah. Uh, because, yeah, that, that's where my career started. I walked in one day and fucking just loved the shit. And he mm-hmm. owns and operates it. So, I mean, Anthony's there all the time. He doesn't fucking, you know. That's cool. It's not one of those scenarios where it's like, you, I'll open the gym and then I'll have some investors run it and I'll just slap my name right. on it kind of bullshit. Yeah. Certain places that do that. And it's like, mm-hmm. you know, um, and people will go there just because they think they're going to see the person that owns mm-hmm. it they think owns it but it's like no they don't <laughs> yeah, their name's just on it yeah right right you know there's a certain tattoo shop that i um remember opening up when i was in the tattoo industry and uh they were doing that you know and um people would flock to it thinking that they're gonna meet the motherfuckers that names mm-hmm. on it it's like no <laughs> you're not yeah it, it's owned by investors who know nothing about the industry yeah, Colonel Sanders is not hanging out at KFC. I would hope not. He's fucking dead. So yeah, <laughs> that would be weird. <laughs> you get a, a two-piece and a fucking exorcism. Uh, yes. <laughs> an old priest and a young priest. You know? <laughs> Jesus. With, with fries on the side, of course. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> gravy costs extra. Yeah. Um, God damn. There's, that's dark. There's... <laughs> That's what I like. I like dark humor. You know? My favorite is like religious humor. Anything where anybody is like making fun of Jesus, like in particular, that's just, I God, I just love it so much. There's this uh, comedian, uh, Josh Eggleston, and he sings this song called Jesus Was a Lady. And it's all about how if Jesus was a lady, how well he would treat her. And uh, uh, it's just hilarious. And I just love it so much. <laughs> uh, that's actually hilarious that's pretty fucking funny uh um, yeah that's yeah i i definitely it's funny that you mentioned too that um there is that correlation with pro wrestling and stand-up comedy because there's so many pro wrestlers getting into stand-up comedy yeah they also see you know how similar it really is so mm-hmm. um yeah you hear that a lot that it's like they go hand in hand it seems to be uh one in the same for the most part. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you could uh, break it. You could break it down into each joke is a spot. And then you've got like the heat and the shine. And, you know, because you're sort of taking the audience on that same roller coaster as you would in a wrestling match. You would in your, in your comedy set, you know? Right. And it's funny how sometimes um, I feel like pro wrestling is kind of like in this middle where you got these other options, like stand up comedy or acting both, are totally reasonable to transition into. Right. And, um, you know, there's not a lot of industries like that can say the same. There's, you know, Mm -hmm. some just are oil and water. Like for me, I could never do MMA and then go into retail and be like, oh, well, it's so natural now when a customer complains, punch them in the face. You know, what I mean? right. <laughs> not quite the same. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't go as smoothly. Um, Can't leave that behind. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's one or the other. You know, yeah. you don't get to combine the two like it's some kind of fucking epic hybrid. I mean, it's, yeah. great. it's great for you doing it until, you know, you're arrested for it. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, it, it's fun at the time but uh it just doesn't work out it's not good for your yeah. prospects right so um so it's definitely unique in that sense and i'm doing acting now and bullshit like that so it's like um even mma does not quite have that same transition as easy into you know uh one one into the other it doesn't right. quite flow the same because i mean you go in you punch someone in the face <laughs> It's not choreographed. <laughs> right. You get paid. There's no acting involved yeah. um, necessarily. I mean, some people have taken it to that level because um, that that's the thing that I think is great. Uh, I mean, you look at Conor McGregor, for example, that motherfucker's entertaining. I don't give a shit mm-hmm. what anyone says. And now if you compare him to Rousey, it's like night and day. Right. Because the thing is Rousey loses one fight and they're basically already talking about it. I think her career is over. Yeah. Connor's lost how many? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, but he's entertaining. She's like a fucking android. She and, is. 
She is. When she was on uh, on WWE, it was uh, I was like, oh my god, like don't don't let her talk. Like have someone else talk for her, please. She's not good at that. Put her with Heyman. I mean, <laughs> right? Fuck. <laughs> if ever someone needed it, that's uh, why Lesnar is with Heyman because you know he yeah. can't talk either. Right, and he doesn't want to. He doesn't fucking like yeah. anybody. <laughs> so yeah. He's like, I got nothing to say to you, bitches. Yeah, can you uh, imagine? You know, <laughs> but it, that's why you know because. Connor has that value to him. He yeah, it's charisma. Him. Yeah. He's he, got jazz. Right. It, it, and it works because it doesn't matter if people like you or not because now they're going to pay to see you get punched in the fucking face. Right. Now they want to see you get knocked the fuck out or they want to see you win. Either way, you win. You yeah. Know, there's, there's a fucking huge value to you. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why he didn't get disciplined for so much shit he's done mm-hmm. because it was making headlines. It's fucking, yeah. you know, um, and, and it's like you either get that or you don't. And I don't think she ever got that. Yeah. And I think a lot of people know how I feel about Rousey. So, um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, not good. Um, <laughs> as a person, just, you know, um, just going off on somebody for congratulating Holly Holm when mm-hmm. she fucking won. And, like, yeah. threatened the person, basically. Like, oh, really? Wow. really? For professionalism? Like you, you're that fragile. Your ego is that sensitive and fragile that because you saw on social media somebody in the industry congratulated somebody on their fucking win, but because their their win was against you, you take that as a personal attack and you fucking yeah. go, go off. It's like unprofessional. It, but what really gets me is it's like I wouldn't really care, except the fact that you're trying to sell yourself as some fucking role model for you know young women and shit. And it's like that's how you teach them how to behave, right? You know what I mean? Like, no sportsmanship whatsoever. You throw tantrums the second you finally lose. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I don't get it. Um, So, you know, a lot of people already know how I've gone off on this subject. So, um, (laughs) you know, uh, we're not going to have beers together anytime soon, her and I. Let's put it that way. Uh, I'm not sending her Christmas cards. Um, You know, and I'm sure that it's quite mutual, but... um, you know, it's uh, even in movies, she had no personality whatsoever. Um, it's just the same old robotic character that, yeah. like, oh, that's just who you are. Like, you have no real personality. And then when you try to show one, it's fucking weird. <laughs> like, it just yeah, seems unnatural. A lot of people are like that, though. I think a lot of people are kind of weird that way. You know, you get run into them every once in a while. You know, yeah. then own it, right? You know what I mean? Right. Like, just fuck it. Get it. Yeah, you're a Vulcan. Just be a Vulcan. Yeah, you know, it, it's just weird to me that some people are like that, where it's like they they just come off as awkward because they're not owning it. And it's like, I fail to believe anybody's really that naturally awkward 24-7. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. every minute of every day, no matter who they're interacting with. And I don't know, maybe it's an insecurity mm-hmm. thing or whatever. Um but it just seemed like she could not take a loss and just be like, all right, shit happens. You can't mm-hmm. win them all, whatever. Um, so the tantrums and shit like that was just, you know, not, not exactly impressive. <laughs> yeah. um, so, and then there's people in the industry that are great. Um, I think McGregor should get into movies because I think he'd be entertaining as fuck. I, you know what? I agree. I, if we could just pair him up with, um, God, what's the guy's name that made Snatch? What is his name? That uh, director. Oh, yeah. I love that fucking movie, too. Yes, that guy. Yeah, who the fuck was that again? What? I can't remember his name. He was married uh, to Madonna for a while. Who the f- Oh, okay. Well, you said married to, not real. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. she's seen more shaft than an elevator. So if you said she was, <laughs> you know, he was banging Madonna for a while, like, it could be fucking anybody. No, they were totally married and, like, had babies and stuff. I forget uh, his name. I anyway, got- that, I- that director would be great with him. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I got to a point where I started to question, fuck, I might have fucked Madonna for all I know. Who knows? Everybody <laughs> seems to, you know? Like, right. fuck. I think it would be hilarious if we found out that she really hadn't screwed that many people. She just portrayed that she had so well that we all just assumed. I think that would be really hilarious. And, and everybody that that just kind of like accepted it as fact was just yeah. so fucked and up. And how upset yeah. it made everybody in like the 80s and 90s, remember? Right. God, everybody was so mad at her for being so sexual. And I mean, in the 80s, 
coke was such yeah. a thing most of those motherfuckers probably thought they actually did do her and they're like oh yeah okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't even remember that it never happened they're like yeah probably all right they just cool. assumed yeah. yeah yeah that's fine you know <laughs> doing a lot of coke in 86 you know <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's actually really funny because uh, a, a friend of mine, um, Mick Strawn, uh, called me one time when we were talking about the 80s and how he was in the industry then. And I was just a kid. So at the time, you know, in the 80s, so I wouldn't really know. Like, well, I, I know, obviously, but I mean, not from experience, but uh, um, he was working on the set of uh, Freddy's Nightmares at the time, the the Nightmare on Elm Street TV show that was oh yeah kind of short lived, um, and he was talking about how you know that set and then a set for like um, a commercial we have here in Canada uh, for um, basically safety, um, encouraging kids to you know keep themselves fucking cautious when they're playing and don't lose limbs and bullshit right right so there's this creepy fucking robot thing that like puts its arm back on and lets these little motherfuckers know creeped us all out as kids letting us know like i can put my arm back on you can't so like oh my god and i was like that's fucking it's so (laughs) creepy i send you the youtube video because it's so creepy and it, it was just a traumatizing childhood it turns out he worked on it he, oh, wow. he did the set and the whole thing, right? And he worked on Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and 4, um, mm-hmm. Blade. He did the special effects for Blade, uh, Boogie Nights. Him and I are hosting a show together for my uh, network because uh, mm-hmm. I'm launching like a Roku, Apple TV, Fire Stick, and Android. That's TV, badass, man. Uh, network that's going to have a bunch of people shit on it. So um, him and I are doing a show together. Mm-hmm. And he had this great concept where he's like, every week we'll take whatever the fuck weird shit happens in the U S and you take whatever weird shit happens in Canada that makes headlines or whatever. We'll fucking compare how fucked up, you know? <laughs> oh, you got to add Florida in there because oh. Florida has got to be separate from like the rest of the United States. It's, gonna be it's, its, like own, its own country. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up there. I know. I've been there enough that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's some shit. Um, yeah. So he was talking about on set doing, you know, the set design and things that would, and this is the greatest story. And I damn near died when he told me. Um, so that, that commercial with the robot, it turns mm-hmm. out that it was actually this like really small gymnast girl um, in a costume. And <laughs> keep in mind, this is a commercial for kids for war amps, no less. The company, you know, the organization that does all the artificial limbs and the whole fucking. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so, the whole premise of this thing is to remind kids to be safe when they're playing, so they don't end up like that, losing limbs and shit, because it's usually avoidable. Um, or was it really an advertisement for their business? <laughs> you know, I mean, at the end of the day, you yeah. Either way, with that. Um, so, he's like you see motherfuckers out in their trucks and they come in and they still got Coke on their noses and Mm. the the whole mentality and everything. They rigged this girl up because it's a whole thing where she's like doing all this acrobatic shit. This robot's kind of like fucking swinging off pipes and just kind of traveling by swinging off everything Mm -hmm. in space and everything. It's so trippy. And um, there's all these turning gears and shit. And that's how the fucker loses an arm but then just like welds it back on because robots can do that shit. You can't motherfucker basically is the gist of it all. Uh, So they put this girl, they rigged her up to a cable and all that and a harness to do all this shit. Right. mm -hmm. And there's all the pipes that Mick put together and everything for, they rigged that cable up to somebody's truck. They don't know who's they don't care. (laughs) The owner of that truck decided they're done for the fucking day and they decided to drive off home. While this girl's rigged up to. Oh my God. It's a fucking commercial about staying safe. And this poor girl's getting pulled through the pipes and shit, banging off everything, ends up injured. Oh, geez. And and so she's out six months because she's injured, not terribly, thankfully, but still. Uh And she's the only one that can fit. The costume is fucking designed just for her (laughs) because of her size and her ability. 
So they got to wait six months before they can even finish this now because <laughs> she's off injured. It's about <laughs> the most unsafe thing you can do for an ad about staying safe. Yeah, stay if, safe while we yank this chick through a tube. Right. It, it was God. fucking great. It was like the funniest fucking story. He's like, well, that was the 80s, you know. Yeah. He's coked up. and That's what went down. That's how it was. But it's such a trip to be, like, friends with this dude that's, like, I grew up watching Freddy's Nightmares and you were the set designer. Yeah, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? And now yeah. I'm in a position where, like, I'm friends with him and, like, CJ Graham from Friday the 13th and bullshit like that. And all these. Mm -hmm. Ken Sagos is a friend of mine from Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and 4. And I grew up loving that fucking movie. Like, that's awesome. You know, so it, it's a trip to have them come on my show and, you know, and now doing movies myself and whatever. I was like, okay, okay this is cool, but there's a downside. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to sound ungrateful, so I'm going to fucking choose my words real carefully. Um, so I have a profile that I have for personal, which you're on mm -hmm. uh, my friends list. And then I have my profile just for fans to fucking add me and whatever, because it's not personal stuff. I don't care. It comes a point like you have to kind of pull the reins back a little bit on your settings, even on a fan page, because it gets a little crazy. Right. And so for the longest time, I had it set where it's like only friends of friends can add me just to kind of calm shit down a little bit. I made the mistake of opening the floodgates. <laughs> so off air, I told you that I literally have slept for like three hours today. Mm -hmm. In that time, when I woke up from that, um, I think I, I went to sleep at like, you know, uh, probably 11 a.m. <laughs> um, sleep for like maybe three hours at best and uh, wake up and there's 98 fucking friend requests. And as soon as I clear all that, fucking 30 more come in, clear all that. It, it's coming in waves because Facebook can't keep up with the shit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is fucking nuts. So I decide, okay, I'm going to fucking try to get my shit all together, even though I'm, you know, I, I never sleep much because I'm always so damn busy. I got way too much going on. Um, and I'm like, I'm going to try to shower at least and fucking kind of have that me time, you know, before the show and whatever. I don't know about you, but personally, I always like put music on when I'm fucking having a shower just to kind of, you know, Right. Give you give you something to focus on while you're doing your thing and, and just kind of, you know, I don't know. It's, I, I just always like background noise. You know what I'm saying? And I just use my phone. It's convenient. So I can't get through a fucking song playing without constant ding, ding. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? So it's like, what was the point? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so by the time I get out of the fucking shower, there's about 50 more friend requests. And then there's the messages because everyone thinks, oh, well, if you accepted, <laughs> you're just going to talk to me now. It's like, if I fucking take time out of my day to talk to you and everyone else, my day's shot. I have right. nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, God damn, you know? Um, so that whole thing was just nuts. And uh, I'm trying to speed things up so I can get to the show and fucking not keep you waiting. And, and it's just like, I had to silence my phone because it's it's just going to go on and on. And by the time we're done here, who knows how the fuck many I'm going to have to deal with. <laughs> and I was you like, click I, on every single one, man. It's annoying. You it's know, like I can hit shift and, you know, the down key. Right. Um, so I'm kind of like, fuck, you know, I. I can't bring myself to have my personal assistant take care of it because that's a dick move because that's the most tedious, busy work bullshit. <laughs> I can't do that. that that's just mm -hmm. fucking, that's an asshole thing to do. Um, but, you know, so I have to sit there personally and just go through them all. And as soon as you get some cleared, more pour in. I'm like, what mm -hmm. the fuck is going on? You know, it, it's, I don't get it, but I'm grateful I am. I don't want to, but it's like when your phone is just constantly dinging. Like if I was to unmute it right now, you you would fucking not like, get a like, word. Like, like, yeah, you wouldn't get a fucking word in <laughs> because. <laughs> and everyone that knows about my show by the now knows that 
I have kind of taken the route of trying to catch myself. So if you hear, I always tell motherfuckers, if you hear my phone go off during a show and you see me out in the fucking street, no matter where I travel to, whatever, and you tell me what show you're listening to and that you heard my fucking phone go off, I owe you a goddamn beer. <laughs> that way, I, you know, I, it's going to get real expensive. So imagine if I left it on now, fucking forgetting to silence that some bitch. Yeah, we could hang out and I can get totally trashed. I, I would have to buy you a fucking brewery. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> speaking of breweries, why are there so many everywhere? How many different kinds of beer do we need? How I, many? I, I ain't mad at it, but I get your point. Like, right, like I'm not mad at each <laughs> at it either. It just seems excessive at this point. Yeah, yeah. It's like find something new. Like right. You know. Come like, on. remember when Starbucks were, like, across the street from each other? Now there's, like, breweries all across the street from each other. You know? It's mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm part Irish, so uh, I can't be mad at it, but... Right? I will taste all of the beers. I'm fine with it. It's just a lot. It's too much. <laughs> Goodness. Just get a sample of all of them. Yeah, yeah. Just bring me one of those racks where they have, like, the little teeny tiny beer glasses. Those are so cute. I love that. I love tasting it all. I, I went to an Irish pub one time that had the coolest thing and it's probably going to sound so simple and people are going to be like, wow, it doesn't take much to impress you. But <laughs> I, I thought it was really cool. Uh, they had a sampler that, mm -hmm. you, that you could buy where, because they had all in-house Irish beers. Mm -hmm. um, so they would bring you this wooden thing that had like four half pints. Yeah. Uh, on it and you they they have it in a glass that has the name of each one on it right so then if you liked one in particular you could order it I was like, right oh, right brilliant marketing yeah uh, they do that here it's great you know so much uh, fun yeah i love that kind of shit i'm like that's fucking business genius because it's not a lot you know half pints so you're getting yeah. two points out of it most people fucking at a dinner will fucking drink that easy mm -hmm. so but they put it in the half pint so it looks smaller. And then you're like, oh, these are samples. So now, you know, I'll go yeah. through four of those and then still order a couple fucking beers and don't think nothing of it, you know, because it's samples, right? And so it just puts that idea in your head that this is fine. It's just a sample. It doesn't count, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just a taste. It doesn't matter. Right, it's like right. uh, cake at work. Those calories don't count. And they managed to fucking sell you the sample rather than just give it to you. And yeah, like, yeah, they do. Because it's just the right size where you're like, well, it makes sense. We're not just yeah. like, hand you free beer, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, I'll buy that for twelve dollars, and I'll you buy this, uh, this little glass of uh, strawberry, whatever the fuck, you know, for like ten dollars. But it it's the high alcohol content, I think, that sells it. Yeah, it's, yeah, sure. yeah. Um, and it, it's funny. I, I would imagine over there, it's the same shit as when you go to a baseball game. Um, I remember, I think it was like, God damn, probably seven years ago now, uh, went to a baseball game here and well in Toronto, um, I've moved out of Toronto since, but went to a, a baseball game there and just a tall can, man, a tall boy was 11 bucks. What? And that's so standard for like, you know, it's like I could go to the beer store and get one for three. Yeah. The same thing for three bucks and y'all are charging 11 two tall boys 22 dollars yeah just because i'm in this building in particular and then hot dogs another 22 dollars for two yeah you know what i'm saying you get one for yourself and one for somebody yeah. else get i don't know they might be worth that much i've done wrestling matches for a hot dog and a handshake you know i could see hot dogs costing that much <laughs> It better be the best goddamn hot dog I've ever had in my life. Uh, if I'm <laughs> getting taken to suplex for a fucking hot dog. Um, <laughs> and then with me, maybe I'm picky. But only if it's the best goddamn hot dog I've ever had will I shake your hand. So, <laughs> yeah. so you're a little more lenient than I am with the whole <laughs> hot dog and a handshake thing being acceptable because uh, the handshake would be dependent on the quality of the hot dog of course right <laughs> i play hardball you know <laughs> <laughs> businessman yeah yeah <laughs> not fucking around eat a real hot dog man you know slap the fucking thing out of their hand don't insult me with this crap <laughs> yeah i better have a pepper on it or some chili right you know is that all beef motherfucker get that crap out of here if it's not you know? <laughs> <laughs> mechanically separated 
Ham. God. Jesus. <laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah, as soon as I saw your your videos, I was like, oh, this is gonna be a fun one. Because it's so <laughs> unpredictable with this fucking business. Um, I've had shows and I don't want to shit on anybody, but let's call it what it is. There are certain times where you'll sit there and be like, can I just fucking end this now? Yeah. Can I just say, hey, man, I got to go potty. Can I can we revisit in a week and then just be done? <laughs> you know, like, fuck, it, it, it's sometimes it's so rare. It's so rare. Yeah, but I think most people can tell. Like, I got a lot of friends in the industry, so when they come on, it's kind of basically like shooting the shit with your friends. So it, right. time will fly by. Um, I've had Kid Rock's fucking guitarist uh, Kenny Olson on, who's a friend of mine, and we shot the shit for two hours. He was sitting in his car in a church parking lot because he was on his way to a gig that was seven hours away to drive. Right. So he, had, he had a seven hour fucking road trip ahead of him and he pulls over and sits and shoots the shit with me for two fucking hours. And I, I got to a point where I had to be like, all right, dude, look, I've taken up way too much of your fucking time. You've got a seven hour drive ahead of you. He's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. You know, maybe I should go, <laughs> you know? Um, so I'm like, all right, cool. But then there's the opposite. And I think people can tell when it's been 30 minutes or so. And I'm like, Hey, yeah. you know, yeah, I've taken up a lot of your time and, you know, it's kind of my way of saying you're you're not like. Yeah, you're boring me. Don't you have other shit to do besides boring me right now? My God. Yeah, it, it, right. Or or sometimes maybe they'll seem not interested because they're jet lagged and they're fucking they yeah. just came off a set for like, yeah. you know, a, a 14 hour day. And I'm like, man, I'm not going to be that guy that is like <laughs> oblivious to the fact that you're in your hotel room yeah. now and probably just want to go to fuck to sleep. Right. Um, so I'll cut it short. And then people will kind of comment like, Oh, that one didn't go so hot, huh? You came <laughs> bored. Um, and it's like, no, man, it's just, I, I'm thinking of the listeners. It, it, if it feels like I'm pulling teeth to get a conversation out of somebody, then I'm just going to wrap the bitch. You know what I mean? Yeah, not fun. You can't win them all, man. Sometimes you're going to catch people where at the time they're gung ho about doing it. And then when the time comes, like they've had such a brutal fucking day on set and, yeah. you know, they're jet lagged and time zone differences are a bitch. And, you know, it, it's so much unforeseeable shit. Um, I mean, we've all done it. it, it it's yeah. so, it's so easy to say because it's down the road. Ah, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I'll do that. Totally. And then when the day comes, you're like, oh, fuck, I got to do this. I it, think most people are probably like that, though. Yeah. You no. Know? I am it's just part of being, you know, an anxious human. Oh my God. You know how many fucking times a day? I'm like, I changed my mind. I don't want to fucking be successful anymore. <laughs> like this, uh, right. this is exhausting. Like, uh, oh my God. It's scary too. <laughs> it, oh my God. It's been years now. And I'm still like, I don't fucking understand this shit. Like mm -hmm. I don't see what the big deal is, but whatever. Uh, I'm appreciative of it. Um, mm -hmm. But it's just fucking strange to me. Um, it, it, you know, but then again, you, you get those days where, but uh, to me, it's kind of also like, well, that makes the fun shows just that much better. Uh, the ones that are enjoyable to do, it just makes me appreciate those more. So, uh, yeah, yeah, because you have to, you know, get through the bad stuff to get through the good stuff. Yeah. All that jazz. Thankfully, I haven't had too many nightmare fucking scenarios where, like, you know, technically things go wrong and you're like, fuck, but I've had, yeah. a, I've had a couple. Um, I, I would say it's probably for you, it'd be the equivalent of like, for what you do, if, if you were to like, just have a shit set and you just like felt like, oh, fuck that just flopped, you know, yeah, like, sometimes that happens, but I still, even afterwards and I feel like, oh God, that sucked. I'm like, well, whatever. I learned something, I guess like there, those people aren't going to remember tomorrow. Right. You know, the audience is going to totally forget who you are. So it's fine. Just move on to the next one. Whatever. <laughs> See, for me, then I, I have it a little easier than you. Mm -hmm. Because in my case, when something goes that wrong, there's nothing for anyone to forget. Like, for example, I've had a show that's never seen the light of day. Mm -hmm. And it sucks because it was a fucking fun show with a dude that works for uh, SpaceX. Mm -hmm. And he was just in a spot where he had the shittiest connection. So 
you couldn't like he was cutting out so much that none of it was usable. Yeah. So I had to scrap the whole show. And it was like, Can I just hold on one second. I just need to acknowledge your Canadian accent for a moment. <laughs> I just need to say that every time you say out or about inside my head, I just get all these little warm fuzzies. I just love Canadian accents so much. They're so funny. And like here in the Midwest, like I'm from Florida and then I moved to South Dakota and it's like, they have the same accent, but a little bit lighter. It's kind of like the difference between Scottish and English accents, the difference between Midwestern and Canadian. And yours is quite significant. And I'm really enjoying it. Just wanted to tell you that. <laughs> Every fucking time. <laughs> Having American friends, dude, it, it, it comes up all the time. And it's like, I love uh, it so much. It's like not a bad thing at all. We just really enjoy it. And it's just really fun to us. And, and you know what's hilarious to us is there's actually a part of Canada that it's so stereotypically just bad that we mock them. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kind of like the South here. Oh, big time. <laughs> that, that would be the equivalent. But like right. whatever, that, whatever that Canadian stereotype is that Americans think we all sound like, you know, yeah. a dumb shit and with that over the top fucking weird accent. There's a yeah. place in Canada where that is the norm. That is exactly, uh -huh. you know, where they literally, it's usually in the prairies where the motherfuckers will be like, yeah, fuck yeah, bud. And you know, <laughs> like this total over the top Canadian fucking, Love it. I was like, wow, you know, if, if this amuses you, <laughs> you need to check those motherfuckers out. What is a weird Canadian phrase that people say in Canada, but not anywhere else. So like here, and an example would be like here in the Midwest, people say, oh, holy buckets. And I've never heard anybody say that anywhere else, but here, and then I met a lady and she said it. And I was like, oh, that's a weird thing that that lady says, but then everybody else here says it too. Like if something happens or like, oh, holy buckets, it's hot outside or oh, holy buckets, that's expensive. You know, it's like an exclamation. Interesting. Oh, that's, yeah. That's a great question. Um, hmm. That's a fucking, I'm going to have to think about that. because. Yeah, yeah. I need I, to know I, because there's like Southern weird things that Southern people say from the South. Like my dad would say, oh, that person, um, you'd be like, hey, where's so-and-so? And he'd say, oh, I don't know. I guess he went to shit and the hogs ate him. Like, what the hell? Why would you even, where did they even come from? Like what a horrible thing happened to have that be added to someone's vernacular that that's a, an appropriate response to when you're looking for somebody. That's what I'm looking for. Something weird like that. Well, that's just it, right? It, obviously <laughs> something prompted this to become a set. Yeah. Like Apparently somebody went to go use the outhouse, fell in the hog pen, was probably drunk. And then the hogs literally ate him and it became just, Oh yeah, that's probably what happened to that guy. It's just a probable explanation. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Shots obviously have been fired at Canada. So <laughs> no, I wouldn't call them shots. Nah, I yeah. call it like a t-shirt <laughs> gun with like a heart on it. <laughs> um uh, fuck what year was it? I wanna say like 2007. Uh-huh. Um this friend of mine told me, and you're going to love this fucking story. Uh, this friend of mine told me about this cottage trip they went on. And one of their friends brought this girl from Texas. What's a cottage home. trip? Is that like going to hang out in a cabin? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See, that's a Canadian saying. There you go. There. Fuck. There's one. I inadvertently answered your question. Didn't even read yes, it. I was you did. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, so you know, uh, it's it's like camping for people that aren't quite that hardcore. Like, okay, fuck, okay, fuck, fuck the tent. I want a building. Yeah, just with a little less luxurious shit. You know, what I mean? yeah. <laughs> um, I, you know, I like both. I, I'm a camping dude. Every summer I go. I don't give a fuck. No, yeah, me too. I love it. No excuses. Every summer, it's it's done. You know, um, like. You know, it's like, why would I not want to take a few days from all this and go drink a whole lot of beer? Hope be I don't, outside. Yeah, hope I don't fall in the fire, you know, and piss in the woods. 
It's great. Um, <laughs> my boys love that. That's like every boy's favorite thing is to go pee outside. My <laughs> husband and I rented a cabin and it had a deck that was like hanging over this beautiful river. And my husband's favorite part of the whole vacation was being able to pee over the deck into the river. I was his favorite part. <laughs> favorite. <laughs> A man after my own heart, I tell you. Right, right. Um, fuck. Um, so, you know, I, I thought, okay, this is going to be interesting because there's a reason why she made it a point to say that this girl that came with them was visiting from Texas. Mm-hmm. You ever have those moments where somebody will say something so over the top, ridiculously stupid? That you, you just kind of pause and you wait for them to crack up because you're like, there's no way they could be serious right now. Usually it's me. <laughs> Usually I'm that person. <laughs> <laughs> like, what did she just say? We're going to get along just fine. Um, <laughs> so this is one of those scenarios. So my friend, they were out by the fire and they look up and, you know, my friend's like, oh, that's cool. You can see the Big Dipper because in the city, obviously, with all the lights and, you know, not so much. So it's just those little things, right, when you're camping. So they're by the fire, and my friend looks up and is like, oh, that's so cool. Look, you can clearly see the Big Dipper. And this girl from Texas with a straight face, and she was dead fucking serious, says, y'all get that out here too? (laughs) Well, you got to remember – that the the education system in the South, not exactly the way it is in Canada, I'm sure. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, it's called yeah. the world. <laughs> yeah. What was terrifying, and I don't ever get into politics, but, you know, and I don't view this as all that political. But uh-huh. my first thought process was, because at the time, Bush was your president. Right. And I was like, fuck, here we go. Yep. I can see it now. We're getting bombed, like, tomorrow. Yeah. And the reason is... Give us back our stars. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> 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 stole the Big Dipper. She probably went back home and told everybody the Canadians stole the Big Dipper and that we needed to invade like that John Candy movie. I literally thought that was how it was going down. Like he's going <laughs> to fucking just finger on the button, like fuck them. You know, I thought we were cool. They yeah. stole from us. Um, you know, how yeah. are we supposed to cook now without the Big Dipper? <laughs> right. Oh my God. How am I supposed to make my mac and cheese? <laughs> yeah. No, it should be. How are they supposed to make their math without the Big Dipper? That is true. <laughs> that is very true. Yes. Um, good point. Good point. Um, <laughs> I tried to give a little credit and I got called out right off. The- <laughs> <laughs> Don't give any credit to those people. No, no. You know, uh, it was, you know, my my attempt at apologizing for Nickelback um, are bad mistakes were made over here in Canada. <laughs> oh no, um, they're fine. You leave Nickelback alone. They're got, adorably horrible. You, you guys can keep them. I mean, it's cool. <laughs> hey, we'll trade them for five finger death punch. How about that? We'll trade them for that. We'll trade them for shine down. You guys can have shine down and then we'll keep Nickelback. If you're going to offer five finger death punch for Nickelback, it's only right. I give you Justin Bieber as well. Just to kind of okay. just to even it out. Yeah. Justin yeah. Bieber, maybe a little Celine Dion. Maybe you can have her too. Bieber. Okay. <laughs> she the won't French. take up that much space. She's just a stick. So it'll be fine. The French don't like me too much. I don't think so. It's fine. <laughs> you, you guys can have her. I've, I've spoken. Yeah. To yeah. Her. She's like Quebecois, right? Yeah. And I drove through there to move here. Uh huh. That sucked. Really? Are people rude there? They hate you if you don't speak French. What's up with that? Uh, they're dicks. <laughs> <laughs> and the only thing more confusing than their fucking language is their roads. Right? Uh, oh, the, the roads, the way it's designed and everything is just fucking so stupid. Uh. Um, so I, I was cutting through there. I stopped to get food and I decided then and there, I am not staying here. Mm-hmm. So it was literally a 12 hour fucking road trip to just get through there and make it to the next province and then fucking crash there for the night, hit a bar, you know, have dinner and a couple beers, fucking sleep. And then back on the road for another four hours. Right. It's so worth it to not stay in Quebec because <laughs> fuck them. Um, hilarious to me. Shout out to Quebec. 
<laughs> for those that do like all two of yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Bonjour, you and your weird version of French you speak. Right? Like it, it's like welfare French. It's like it, yeah. It's not uh -huh. authentic. Welfare French. <laughs> What's like a cheap grocery store up there? What's your Walmart? Do you guys have Walmart or do you have like a oh, version yeah. of Walmart? Oh yeah, we definitely have Walmart. It's um, like it's like Walmart France. Like yeah. great great value France. See, stores are funny because we had Kmart here and they mm -hmm. went out of business after mm -hmm. a while. I think by the late 90s, they were going tits up. Yeah. And over for you guys, they do quite well from what I hear. Well, now they're not. Now most of them are gone. Oh, really? I guess. Yeah. 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 Uh, so Target came over here and they thought, well, over there, they're the competition for Walmart. They thought it'd be the same deal over here. Flopped. Like Really? Yeah, people felt like I already go to Walmart. It's no fucking different. What's the point? Why change? Ah, uh, because you guys don't have the same socioeconomic, like, uh, stratosphere as we do. Because like, Target costs a little bit more money, so it's like a different, um, different class of people that go to Target as the people that go to Walmart. Because like, people who are fancy will like go to Target on purpose to spend more money just to avoid going to Walmart. It's like a total weird class thing here. Yeah, we, we have a whole weird thing ourselves where um, it's really funny. People are such dicks. Um, yeah. They're so entitled. It's fucking stupid. Because people were upset that Target came here, bought out one of our Canadian stores that's been around forever, and then went tits up not long after. So it was like, wow. So we lost the fucking... It's like, you dickheads didn't shop there anyway. You're going to Walmart because it was cheaper. Right. But then you complain that a Canadian store because it's more expensive because they don't have the buying power that fucking, because they're keeping all of this shit, their suppliers, everything in Canada to keep the fucking mm -hmm. economy, you know, where we would like it to be. Right. And so you don't shop there, but then when they close, you're fucking outraged. Like, Oh, it's such a shame. Well, you know how business works, motherfucker. If you want it to stay open, support it. Well, shop <laughs> at it. Just you like know? businesses. The same people that would go to Walmart instead literally tell you cause it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. are now crying because that fucking store is closed it's the same way here with that sort of thing it's, it's just the, people are dumb people are silly yeah you know like george carlin says he's like you know 50 percent of uh the population is is or they're idiots and then like the 50 other 50 percent are like even dumber <laughs> <laughs> yeah so walmart's like kind of the big one here um because nothing else has been able to compete with them at all. Yeah, and, that's how it is here too. Yeah, we, we heard all this shit about, oh, Target's like their big competitor over there. So they're going to come here now and try to compete with them here as well. How'd that work out for you? Um, yeah. Oh, I love some Target, man. I will, I will go to some Target. I love it. <laughs> Shots have been fired, Walmart. What's up now? Yes. Um, because they have a Starbucks in there. So, like, I can go get, like, a mocha frappa, whatever the fuck. And then I can happily sip on that while my kids annoy the shit out of me. And I look at, like, big lady panties. You know, it's like a happy Sunday. <laughs> is it weird that I also look at this? <laughs> no, it's not weird at all. There are lots of men who like big lady panties. They just imagine them on a big lady. <laughs> I, I, just, I, I, like, wear them like a cape. I'm, I'm yes, yes. I'm an idiot, so I mean... They probably make a good mask. You know, you know I, I just, you know... I, work it around your ears. It yeah. had a lot of surface area. <laughs> the cotton panel would be nice. I went into a store. <laughs> I think it was Walmart. And you know how they have that bin of, like, shitty DVDs that no one's ever heard of? Oh, yeah, I love that bin. Somebody got lazy, and they put a pair of panties they didn't want in that bin uh-huh i walk through and i glance at the bin and out of the corner of my eye i see something that catches my eye there was literally a dvd of a movie called skid marks oh no i put that case right in them panties and i walked around the corner and all of a sudden i hear someone crack up honey look at this look what someone did and i'm just like hey, you're welcome because <laughs> i entertained them <laughs> so my idiocy was apparently you know, a day maker for somebody. So, oh, nice. you know, it's what I do. That's Canadian. I was real Canadian of you. You know, that was a very Canadian prank. Right. You know, and, 
mature as a motherfucker, how I became successful. Yeah. He um, is a good mark. <laughs> <laughs> That's so me too. Um, but I'm so grateful for Starbucks. I don't drink the shit, but I'm so mm. grateful for it because I'm confident in saying it's the be all end all reason why my personal assistant has not murdered me yet. Um, <laughs> it, it's kind of that balance of what keeps her tolerating my bullshit. Uh-huh. <laughs> In my yeah. schedule, basically. You can put up with a lot with some nice Starbucks. I, I've I've learned that. Uh, yeah. This... <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, it's just the schedule and everything, and it's like, I I'm I'm an idiot. I love fucking like I'll have stoner thoughts where I'll just mm-hmm. there's certain people that like I just get this joy out of harassing them because that's our relationship, I guess. Right. Like my agent. Uh, I'm pretty sure he hates me mm-hmm. basically because he told me he hates me. So <laughs> um, I'm starting to get the impression he hates me. Uh, <laughs> uh, I messaged him one time. I texted him at like, it was probably like three in the morning and I'm always fucking with him like that. I'm like, what are you doing? It's fucking 3 a.m. I'm sleeping. Ah, sleep in your dead motherfucker. Um, you know, so I got high as a kite one night and you know, my assistant's like, we should fuck with him. Of course. We should always fuck with him. Like, you say that like it's new. So I shot him a text. I'm like, hey, dude, I just had a thought. And it's really crucial. Um, how come there's Batman shampoo, but there's no conditioner Gordon? And all I get back is text, <laughs> I fucking hate you. <laughs> that is a great joke. I was serious. I love it. I was very, very concerned about this matter. The marketing guy probably came up with it and was totally shot down. And he is also very sad that there is not a conditioner Gordon. I'm sure you're not alone. I need to find him now. And we need to be best fucking friends forever. We start a petition. Right. Let's do (laughs) it. Um, Do you want in? Yeah, sure. (laughs) You want to sign this? We're going to go fund me going and everything. Uh, It's so funny. If I had, (laughs) I swear I could retire already, but... I could retire like 75 times if I had a dollar for every time that motherfucker told me he hates me. So <laughs> I fuck with him. And he always has that, like, he's trying not to laugh. Okay, he like turns his head and he shakes his head and you can see him trying not to fight. He's like halfway smiling. Trying to pretend to be an adult. Right, because he's like, I fucking hate you. And I was like, you know, I'm really starting to get the impression you don't like me very much. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> but yet he puts up with me, so... Mm-hmm. I'm like, you've been dealing with my shit for how many years now? I think you might like me just a little. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I entertain him to some degree. Um, or maybe it's the money. I don't know. Uh, probably. I, probably the money. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I entertain him at all. Um, <laughs> I'm probably as entertaining as a colonoscopy to him at this point. He's so <laughs> fed up with my shit. <laughs> what are you going to do? You know? Uh, fuck him. <laughs> So what side of Canada are you on? Um, I'm now in Nova Scotia on the East Coast. So oh. I, I was born in the Toronto area. Right. Um, I, I've lived everywhere. It's stupid. Um, at one point, like I lived in Niagara Falls area. So I was literally on that New York border. Um, I don't think they want much to do with me over there. Uh, <laughs> so I kept my distance. Um you know, it's funny. Uh, I was doing a show one time and they're like, oh, so, you know, you're going to get into movies now. And at the time I wasn't considering it. So I was like, no, I think, you know, I don't think Hollywood wants any more to do with me than what's already been kind of forced upon them. So I think I'll leave that alone. (laughs) And here we are. I lied, I guess. Um, (laughs) I ended up spending a lot of time going to New York and shit for like radio fucking interviews and all that bullshit. Um, but it's so funny how it's like so different on our side of the border in Niagara Falls. I've actually heard New Yorkers say like, you guys have like this nice side of Niagara Falls where it looks so clean and so nice. And then there's ours, like the trees are all dead and there's garbage everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, trust me, it's not so great on this side either because it looks nice, but mm-hmm. there's like, you know, the city's connected to Niagara it's mm-hmm. like there's no jobs for people. So it's like everybody's like a pill junkie and living yeah. off the system. And literally every fucking other building is a bar. And it's just, mm-hmm. you know, 
uh, it's not good. So I was like, you know, the appearance looks nice, but, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's all the same. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I guess the grass is always greener, but if you actually come over and to that side and kind of see what's really going on, it's like, oh, <laughs> it's not so different. <laughs> we might sound a little stupid, but, you know, with our <laughs> fucking accents, we don't know we have. Um, yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that my southern accent was so significant until I moved up here. And then people would ask me where I was from. And I was like, oh, I'm from Florida. Florida. And they would say, oh, you know, I can tell because you have a southern accent. I'm like, I ain't got no southern accent. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Just totally turned into like Yosemite Sam, or, like Foghorn <laughs> Leghorn. <laughs> God, it's horrible. I never even really noticed it that bad before. But now it's totally obvious. That's funny too, because I think we're all so oblivious to the shit because we hear it all the time. And it's yeah. just normal. Um, but then it's like, it, it's funny because when you think of accents, we think of the obvious, you know, like British or fucking Irish or Indian or, you know, but it's like, we don't really notice until, or, or in our case, we'll, like you said, Southern accents stand yeah. out for us. Yeah. Um, and then of course, you know, parts of New York, there's a really hardcore New York accent. Yeah. Like Brooklyn and the Bronx, like there's, and you can tell what neighborhood too. Like if you listen to it hard enough, you're like, Oh, that guy sounds like Jay Z. I know where he's from. Right. Right. And then there's that weird part of New York where it's like this blend of Jewish New York accent. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, i'll be the first to admit i make fun of that all the time you know um i have a cat that's so skittish that hates like you know anything that startles her it, it doesn't take much and it's really funny because now i call her my little jew cat because she comes across like she's like uh mort goldman like super fucking like timid you know oh like a little nervous guy yeah. yeah 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 so i was like every time you know something happens she goes running off of, you know i make fun of her I'm like oh my god <laughs> you know <laughs> just run oh christ and then just runs off yeah. <laughs> like, so worried it's really funny i had johnny brennan uh mort goldman's voice actor from you know jerky boys and shit on my show uh -huh. that, that was the coolest shit um because i grew up loving jerky boys they're they're yeah like, yeah fuckers man so to have the creator of that fucking on my shit was super cool. And we talked for quite some time about, you know, this dude fucking in that entire body of work just knows all of it front to back. That's crazy. You mean, I, that's what I said. I told him, I was like, dude, you've got this massive library of fucking content and anything I mention, you remember all of it. And I'll, I'll know it's all spot on word for word because I still listen to the shit. Because I'm yeah. an idiot, I still think it's hilarious. Um, so it's like I could have just listened to it last week, and mm -hmm. here he is. It's been years and years, like decades, and he'll fucking know everything that was said. Wow! And I'm like, that's crazy. <laughs> I'm always amazed by people like that because, like, it's hard for me to remember stuff. I've hit my head a lot of times, so it's like hard for me to remember to memorize things. So I have to attach it to like an emotion or, um, you know, like, uh, I have to like have more than one thing, more than one sense, uh, you know, involved in the thing I have to memorize for me to be able to remember it. And some people could just read stuff and it's there forever. And that's crazy to me. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Um, it, it seems like something that's probably overlooked, uh, with what you do. But maybe for you, it's, you know, because you do it, um, maybe for you, it, it's not such an oversight, but I don't think a lot of people consider this. There's so many people that make the conscious effort when doing stand up to kind of change the wording a little bit. So, yeah. So it doesn't sound so repetitious, right? Right. Um, in case there's people that, you know, have seen your shit before and are back again, you, you want to keep coming back for that. You know, the same reason you go see fish because they change it up a little bit. <laughs> Nobody goes to see fish. Lots of people go see fish, them and their hacky sacks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then there's this weird part of it where somebody that like, say it's something that was said that they thought was so funny that they're an immediate fan 
and they'll never forget it. Right. But then they'll hear it worded differently and they'll be like, that's not even how it was initially worded. They fucked up their own shit and it's just not as funny now. <laughs> and then they'll go hunting down the original fucking time they heard it and try to find yeah. it. That's how it should be. And it's so funny. You know what I mean? Uh, there's people that like will get like that where it's just, I've seen it where people are like, oh, that, this isn't the version. They said something different before. And I'm like, you know, that's by design, right? There's a That's reason. how that goes. Right. <laughs> yeah but it's like they take it it means so much to them that it's like now theirs i guess in a way that's uh, how art is though people like see or hear or uh you know whatever see a piece of art or listen to something and after that it becomes like a part of their psyche and then they kind of own it after that you know yeah absolutely and i i have a uh philosophy when it comes to art because i'm a huge art fucking freak too like it mellows me out to just do art so you know, I get a lot of people like, oh, I love that picture you did or whatever. Um, are you ever going to do another one like that? Like, are you going to do that one again? Um, I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> because I feel, and I, this may not make sense to some people. They may not, maybe they won't get it. I don't know. Um, maybe it's just me. But I feel like once you create art of any type and you put it out there for everybody, it's not yours anymore. Right. You don't, you don't get to change it now. You know what I mean? Like it's done. Yeah. It's now everybody's because it might mean something to them. You know what I mean? So I just, yeah. I don't fuck with what's already done. I move on to the next thing. Right. And I just, I don't know. I just feel like it, you can't do that anymore. It's like once it's put out there, it's everybody's. It's not yours anymore. Like you've made your decision and you don't get to like change it now. You know, it's like, because it might mean everything to somebody the way it is. You just don't, right. don't fuck with that and take that away from somebody you know what i mean um yeah, yeah. so you know it, it's it's just a weird thing i guess but who the fuck wants to do the same thing twice it, once you've done it you know what i mean like move yeah. on get better at the next thing or whatever um but it is hard to not look at something back and be like i could have done that differently i, I could have done better i think that's what open mics are for that's where you go to tweak your shit exactly you know? right so um yeah, you know, it's it's funny. I guess it, it, it's got to be an artist thing where it's if you're not into art and shit like that or don't do, you know, art of any type, uh, maybe they don't get it. But what you do is an art form, of course. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know what I mean? There's so many. I, I, I think some people lose sight of the fact that art is fucking all sorts of shit. I mean, mm -hmm. cooking, to me, cooking's an art, you know, yeah. Um and you know and then you got music you got fucking movies you got stand-up and fucking you know it's it, it, there's so many different forms and it's all the same i mean in that regard where somehow you may not even know it but somebody it meant the world to somebody right uh, and, and you may never hear about it you know what i mean but it's funny how you have no idea what it like how what you do might mean the world to somebody you know what i mean and maybe it's all they got you know talking yeah. to john yeah talking to johnny brennan he was like dude it, it's crazy to hear how many people will come up to me at a convention or something and be like man you know your comedy shit got me through some dark shit and it's like really I was having fun. Like I didn't really consider that that was ever going to be the case, but it's really cool to hear. Um, and that just kind of makes you look at what you do and be like, I really take it seriously, you know, more than I ever did now because yeah. that possibility is there. And you kind of feel like you owe that to people to really represent them. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. give them the best, if it's going to mean that much to them, you want it to be fucking well worth it. Right. right. And you know, also as a comedian, you're also working through your own shit up there on stage. You know, that's like how you're kind of processing the ridiculousness of life is by making it funny. And then you sort of project it to the world in this funny way. And maybe it'll make somebody else see it that way. And it won't seem so scary, you know? Right. You know, um, I am by no stretch of the imagination, somebody that fancies himself a fucking comedian. I'm just an idiot and people are amused by it. But um, I do have a dark sense of humor. And it might sometimes come off a certain way, but it's meant from a place of love, I swear to God. Um, I think it was season one. Uh, 
I said something so fucked up that everybody just bust out laughing because they're like, I can't believe you just said that shit. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, it's what I do. I mean, uh-huh. people that know me know I don't mean any harm by it, but it was funny as fuck to me. Um, and it had a double meaning. So mm-hmm. season one, like I, I never advertised what I was doing, but it's like people know who I am from my other shit that I've done that they just kind of figured it out. So I never advertised my show. It was just people discovered it. And my producer and I did a show where we decided to talk about like really fucked up, like hookups and bad relationships and shit. Right. Mm-hmm. And I said, a couple of years ago, I was like, I hooked up with this deaf girl. It just happened, whatever. And I was like, you know me, I'm somebody that I, I love to sit down and just have a straight up fucking deep conversation with somebody. I love that shit. I couldn't do that with somebody that, you know, fucking they, they kind of sit there and try to understand what the fuck you're saying and, and they, they get it pretty well, but not quite, you know, you could tell when they're pretending that they fucking, they can't read your lips perfectly. And I was like, so relationship wise, I just don't think that would ever work for me because I, you know what I mean? Like I, it's nothing against them. It's just like without that fucking strong Mm -hmm. conversation and whatever. um, I don't know that to me, that's lacking. Right. So, but I was like, you know, hooked up and whatever I said, but I can't for the life of me. And I said, I feel awful saying this, but it's fucking true and I'll own it and I'll admit it. I said, I can't for the life of me remember what the fuck her name was. And I, I feel so bad. That's fine. (laughs) You know know what I'm like? And I said, I feel awful to admit this because uh-huh. I hooked up a couple fucking times and I just, I don't fucking for the life of me, remember what the fuck her name is. And I feel bad for saying that, but I said, you know, fuck it. It's not like she's going to hear this anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I, <laughs> that's good shit, man. That's not sick. That's <laughs> Canadian sick. But I, then I was like, well, it, she probably doesn't know I have a show motherfuckers. So right. Calm down. It's not like I went for the jugular on that. And she probably would have thought it was funny too. She would, because she had that kind of humor. Yeah. Um, she would always make fun of herself, right? And um, so it, it was just people were like, oh my God, that was brutal. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but you laughed. So shut up. You're going to hell too. Yeah, you're just as sick. Yeah, you're going straight to hell with me, motherfucker. You found it funny. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite jokes I tell were the ones where I don't get a laugh, I get like a, oh. Those are the best because you know those that. mother, you know those motherfuckers are like virtue signaling, but yeah. on, the, on the drive home they're like, hey. <laughs> you know, yeah. like ten minutes later they're like, oh that was funny I get what she was doing there yeah, but yeah. at the moment when I say like you know rotisserie toddler it seems a little extreme. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Damn. So do you want to hear about rotisserie toddlers? What the hell? Why not? Let's upset everybody. (laughs) So I talk about how horrible it was, you know, being in Florida and how people there aren't exactly, you know, the nicest people or the most conscientious. And there's a thing there where people will forget their kids in their cars. And then it's so hot, the kid dies. So I'm like, how do you forget? You put this whole ass human being in your car Right. And then you just traipse on into work for eight hours. And then you come back to rotisserie toddler. And then the crowd goes, oh. <laughs> I know they do because I saw that on the video. And I was like, <laughs> you know, um, people need to calm down some. I love it, though. I would respond that way. That's just an appropriate response. It is. But I mean, there's going to be. I would be concerned if they laughed. You know, you're supposed to go, oh, that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> right, but uh, but there are those people now that are going to be outraged and start talking all this shit. And yeah. So if anyone that listens to my shit, if I haven't gotten that reaction out of you and gotten hate mail yet, don't let this be the fucking time. I right. have a child who passed away at two years old, and I fucking see the humor in this. So it's it's not that. Yeah. You know, yeah. calm down. Yeah. It's not like that you bad. left your kid in your car. Right. You to be made fun of, like what an idiot! How can you be that dumb? How quiet is your kid? Right. Be outraged that that shit actually happens, not that somebody yeah. tries to fucking throw some humor at it, because right. otherwise it's just depressing. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah, people, I don't know, man. I, I, I think you got guts for 
you know, being a comedian in this climate with everybody wanting to fucking be so deeply triggered and offended by everything. Yeah. It takes fucking definite balls to, <laughs> to fucking. I, I think as a female, I get a little bit of leeway. I yeah. think people are much more likely to cancel a dude. True. Or something like that, especially because women aren't supposed to say things like that about babies. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like it's so shocking. It's like, I don't know how to process what she said or be mad at her about it because she's a mom. So if she said it, I guess it's okay then. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it, you know, it, like no one's safe. I mean, I'm surprised right. I haven't gotten hate mail yet. I, I, I'm sure today I would have, you know, but the community I just offended was the deaf community, so they're not going to hear this either. Well, just yeah. one deaf girl. I, so. sh I should send it out in Braille so that way they all get mad and they fucking yeah. send me a bunch of like cryptic looking emails. Said Braille, they're not blind, but that makes it funnier. Exactly, because they're probably pissed too. I, I go yeah. at everybody. You blind know. people are mad. It's usually a dual combination. That's why they're so salty. It's yeah, like Helen Keller. <laughs> You know, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I've heard she was a horrible person. Have you heard this? I have. Like, I don't know how to take that. I need to read further into it so I can make my own judgment. Yeah, I, I haven't heard examples. But yeah, I, I heard some shit, you know. Um, <laughs> like, what is this? Like, a hundred years later, we're like, man, did you hear that shit about Helen Keller? That shit's fucked up. You know, like... <laughs> fuck we're just going at everybody all the time as people like it's just like let's dig some shit up on people that have been gone forever we're canceling helen keller at this point like we've run out of people to cancel right we're gonna cancel they're gonna fucking get a ouija board out and pull yeah. her up just to be like you've been canceled motherfucker yeah, yeah. your twitter account is suspended helen keller <laughs> they they summon her with a ouija board just to be like go away you're awful yeah. <laughs> fuck <laughs> yeah it's funny and like i said nobody's safe because look at even joe rogan right now mm -hmm. he can't fucking win to save his life no matter what the fuck he says somebody's upset about it and I think he likes that though i think he likes being that guy you know yeah it's not like he's losing followers or anything yeah i mean the whole spotify transition he's lost some because oh yeah people aren't gonna pay for it you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Um, and then they axed like a majority of like his old stuff that they found controversial. I'm like, really? How oh my do you, goodness. How do you do that? Like, how the how fuck? Well, well, Alex Jones is still on. Why is he? Well, I, how... think, I think they pulled it. Oh, really? Yeah, all that stuff. Like all everything. That stuff was on. All the shit that they viewed as controversial or upsetting uh -huh. to people, they they pulled it. Huh. There's over 30 shows thus far from his archives that have been pulled. Oh, wow. And um, I'm like, how the fuck do you do that? How do you justify basically um, signing somebody to a massive deal because of what made them successful and then try to fix yeah. what was never broken and change it and then expect the result to be the same? Right. And, like, I'm not a fan, but I want him to be able to say what he wants to say because I want to say what I want to say. And if they're going to make him not be able to say what he wants to say, eventually they're going to come after me too. And so it's got to be free for everybody. That's right. And that's why my show, you know, there was an article written about my show um, where they interviewed me and they asked, like, you know, what uncensored means to me. And I'm like, you know, to most people, they just assume – that it's just means you can cuss all you want and you know, whatever. And that's great. Sure. That's technically mm -hmm. part of it. But to me, uncensored means like you can come on my show and say whatever the fuck you want. I don't have to agree with it. I don't have to right. share your point of view, but I respect your right to say the shit. I think everybody should have a fucking platform to plead their case. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, and uh, if, I don't agree with it, then I'm going to challenge your fucking perspective. And, and no, I don't, you know, bring people on and let them just use straight up hate speech and then try to justify it. Cause certain things, there's no justification for it. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I don't fucking 
um, agree with having somebody on my shit that's just going to come here and use it as a platform like it's a fucking KKK fucking meeting or something. Dude, people do that at open mics. Like sometimes guys will come and uh, they think it's just an excuse to be able to say the N-word over and over and over again or to be able to say some really disgusting shit about the female comic that was up before them, which, you know, I was um, one of the first female comics to come around in Sioux Falls a couple of years ago. And boy, we sure have put that on the kibosh because it used to be a big issue. You know, these guys just being horrible to the girls and being nasty with them and, you know, making them uncomfortable and harassing them. And so um, we've, uh, we've ended that. <laughs> and rightfully so. I mean, yeah, I, comedy, you know, uh, that's the thing is I feel there's people that they either know what the fuck they're doing and they get comedy or they think they can just say a bunch of shit for shock value that has no structure, no art yeah. to it, um, no direction, just right. for the sake of, well, my dickhead buddies in my living room thought it was fucking hysterical because they're all yeah, fucking... shine, no heat just a bunch of headlock takeovers over and over and over again right. like, yeah. not a good match. <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid as fuck yeah uh, and then they think that they killed it and it's mm -hmm. like no you just pissed people off no you were just weird <laughs> you know not, yeah not every reaction is a great reaction you know what right. i mean like, I don't give a fuck personally if somebody loves me or hates me. It's apathy I do not fucking like. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm not doing something that makes you feel anything, then that's on me. Right. But I'm not going to go out of my way to, like, try to be shocking and say stupid shit for the sake of saying it for shock value. Um, I have a sense of humor about things. And if I say something that kind of seems like, oh, goddamn, I can't believe you said that shit. It's because I found it amusing. It wasn't to, like, oh, I'm going to see how I could shock people by just yeah. fabricating a bunch of bullshit that I know is going to upset people. There's this dickhead that was on my show and fuck that guy. <laughs> um, he's a fucking punk bitch and he knows this. So we've had this conversation and I cussed him the fuck out and told him exactly what I think of him because of personal shit that he did. Um, but this motherfucker literally on, I think it was on his own show when I was a guest on that um, admitted to going at this organization and he's like, I'm going to create a bunch of fake email addresses and send them emails saying, oh, you got to see this show. This guy's talking shit about you guys just to try to get them to react to him. If you have to do that, your show sucks. Yeah. It's not a show. It's just trash. And yeah. he, he, he thinks of himself as a stand-up comedian, but he's never made anybody fucking laugh. <laughs> like, it's, it's hilariously terrible. I've had people sit in while I was on his show and they're like, this guy's not funny. And <laughs> he thinks he's a comedian, but he also thinks he's a former pro wrestler and also thinks he's a former MMA fighter and all this other crap. Wow. This motherfucker looks like he's never stepped foot in a gym a day in his life. <laughs> has never said anything yet that anyone found remotely funny. Mm -hmm. And then he's got this bipolar fucking bullshit where one day he's standing up for the gay community. The next day he's trying to piss people off by saying insensitive shit. Mm. It's like, nothing's working for him he's throwing shit at a wall and hoping something sticks and it's not because it's no, so fake. it doesn't work it's yeah. so transparent you know yeah. and i'm sure you see that kind of crap you know in your industry oh, yeah we had a it just uh uh recently we had a fella that was uh being creepy with the girls and uh i had to like um publicly embarrass him to okay. get him to go away and uh you know, like, no, I'm kind of like the den mother in some sort of weird way in our little, our little like, a comedy community. Because, like, a lot of the guys, they don't really feel comfortable with confrontation, you know. And, of course, the women don't. Most girls don't. But I'm like, I will cut a bitch. And so, usually, they just tell me, like, hey, this is going on. Can you handle it? And I'm like, yes, I will handle that because I am the bodyguard. <laughs> you bring, like, a steel chair with you to every fucking, just in case. I'm going to start, I think, bringing a steel chair or a light bulb, you know, one or the other. Like, uh, you know, I'll just create my own hardcore match at the next open mic. Business. Business. That's what I'm saying. So when you show up with your steel chair, this is business 101 right now. I'm, I'm going to hit you with some shit. All right. All right. Someone gets out of line one night. You actually have to use that fucking chair, autograph it and auction it right then and there. Oh, that's beautiful. Motherfuckers will be like, I'll never forget the night that I got this because a comedian straight up 
smash someone's fucking skull in with this goddamn thing because they got out of line. But then I'll be in jail, and then I won't be able to go to shows. But then I would have a lot of good street cred, though. Just be like, it is part of the bit. Yeah, yeah. It's an industry thing. Don't worry about it. I'll just put a, I'll just put like, um, I'll have a plant out in the audience that heckles me, and then I'll just like bash there. Yeah. There you go. Fuck it. You know, mm-hmm. you, you know, they're just gonna sell it on fucking eBay anyway. So I mean. yeah, yeah. I'll Andy Kaufman the whole thing. There you go. Perfect. Could you imagine though, if like it don't fly in your industry? So like, if in wrestling, it was also. You know, someone takes a chair to somebody, cops show, all right, you, that's assault, let's go. And they just yeah. <laughs> match, just arrest the guy. Haven't they tried that before? They, I think they've tried that, like, plot point a few times before where, like, the cops get involved. Always, like, yeah. fucking with Austin, with fucking so many people. It's like, really, dude? You know, yeah. it's... And you know those people aren't real cops? You know where they get those people from? They're from, like, the local wrestling school. They just throw a security shirt on them, Yeah. Yeah, there's so many people that are wrestlers now that people don't even remember were those security people. Yes. You know. That's what they used to do to us. Like whenever uh, um, Impact or um, TNA would come to town um, and uh, um, Jay would have a show, um, he would have all of us, you know, students be like his security at the – at the thing and it was like it was it was ring of honor ring of honor don't let me fuck that up because i'll get my ass beat if i say the wrong promotion it was ring of honor and whenever we come to town we would uh be the security and that was so much fun it was really cool that is fucking cool um that you get to do shit like that too uh when kind of going through the stages and shit it's like yeah i was so bad at it though i was like the worst wrestler in the world i was really good at running the ropes i couldn't do like rolls. I looked so fucking goofy doing rolls because I'm a tall girl with long legs. Oh, and oh, yeah, that's brutal then. Oh my god, I looked so goofy. And like poor Jay Lethal, like I do a roll and I look at him like, hey, did I do it right? And he'd be like, mm mm. <laughs> he'd be like, no, Jamie, no, that was not 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 acceptable. Do it again. <laughs> I'm six foot five, so I understand the struggle. If I try yeah. to do a roll of any type. I don't know how those guys make it look so good. Those big dudes, they look like ballerinas out there. And I'm just a, a moose. Just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> look like a baby moose out there trying to wrestle. I love that little nod to Canada. Um, yes, you get it. You see me <laughs> all the time. I have not actually. Really? Which is really fucking weird because. It is weird. I went camping. <laughs> Yeah, a few years back, I went camping in a a place seven hour drive away where they actually had signs up letting traffic know, like, moose cross here. Right. And it's where a lot of people go moose hunting and shit. So I'm like, cool, I'm camping here. I'm bound to see one. Haven't fucking seen a damn thing. (laughs) God, how disappointing. Right? I I was looking forward to it. I want to see how big these fuckers are, like, in person. Yeah. We went uh, recently out to the Badlands in uh, West uh, South Dakota to go see like bison and shit. And uh, we went to Custer State Park. And did you know that there's like a whole herd of like feral donkeys out there in Custer State Park? And they will like ram your car looking for food. Like I saw them. They like mowed this lady down looking for snacks. I was like, keep driving, honey. Keep driving. They were like crackheads in a bad neighborhood. Like what you need, what you need all in the window. These were not good donkeys at all. <laughs> How did this not take place in Florida? Right? Yeah. I don't know. It's just a little taste of weird in Custer State Park. Watch out for the donkeys next time you go. I just get this visual of going back to Florida and just seeing these methed out donkeys riding on the backs of gators. <laughs> I would not be surprised at all if I saw that. I what would... part of Florida did you go to? Uh, Kissimmee. Okay. And Orlando, I went through there. Yeah. Um, and Miami Strip, I went through there. What a shithole the Strip is. What? Yes. It's they got a- good radio stations in Miami, though. Yeah, but the Strip was just, like, boarded the fuck up still from the oh, 80s. really? From, like, the cocaine fucking violence that took place. They just never recovered. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the businesses along the Strip still had wooden, like, plywood in the windows and shit. Oh, man. Yeah, you know? Um, but, I mean... I, I got love for Florida, though. I, I, I poke fun at them a lot, but mm-hmm. I enjoy myself every time I've gone there. Like, I, I've had a blast, yeah. you know. Um, 
I, I'm a fucking nut for palm trees. Uh huh. So the first time I went to Florida, and the second I got off the plane, the first thing I see is palm trees. I was like, this is so fucking cool. Cause I've never <laughs> seen palm trees. Like, you know, we don't get them here. No, uh, you don't. You know, I felt like I should have brought you all a pine tree or something just to even things out and be like, here, a little gift for you, motherfuckers. Here, uh, have a Christmas tree. Right. You know, fuck. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> stupid. <laughs> have a maple tree. Um, yeah. You know, fuck. Uh, and me without a gift for y'all is fucking, you know, where are my manners? Um, <laughs> I don't think they would have let a tree on a plane, but whatever. You know? <laughs> it's, all, it's a bonsai. Like a little bonsai one. Right. And, you know, when I went, it was January here. So it was like fucking, you know, winter weather. Yeah. So the second I got off the plane there, it's nice and fucking warm, nice warm yeah. breeze. And the fucking palm trees are the first thing I see. I'm like, oh, I'm going to love this. Um, so I got this condo. This is a trip. Mm -hmm. So get this condo. It was like just a one floor house with a pool in the backyard, the whole thing, just to rent it for, you know, the week or whatever. And uh, I was like, this is fucking gorgeous, man. Um, so I stayed there for a week and like pretty much the day before I was supposed to leave, I was like, you know, I could do this another goddamn week. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so I called the, the owners of the, uh, the company that ran the condos. I was like, hey, man, if it's not too much trouble, I wouldn't mind booking this some bitch for another fucking week. You know, yeah. they're like, hey, it wouldn't be a problem, except somebody just booked it for the day you leave. I'm like, all right, that's cool. You know, short notice. It's fine. I get it. So I'll just stick to the plan. I get on my flight and whatever. I get home and you get the fucking paper. And, you know, it's bad when our fucking newspapers cover is what happened in the U.S. Mm -hmm. it, sure enough, as I left the day that I left. And by the time I got home, the very next day, it's in the paper that there was a fucking hurricane that tore through Florida. And the exact fucking place that I was in was totaled. Oh, my God. There was literally like a fucking minivan in the what was the living room. Oh, geez. When was this? Uh, I want to say 97. Okay. Um, so I was like. My first thought was, well, I don't teach you fuckers for taking it out from under me. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I was like, damn, if I did stay another week, I would have been picking bumper out of my fucking teeth. You know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> would have probably had a palm tree up my ass and just died in the worst way. <laughs> the I'm most sure someone died that way in a hurricane. I have to look that up. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I can imagine your search history. <laughs> <laughs> Well, also, I'm a medical professional, so I look up weird shit all the time anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So, like, I was working with this guy one time in a laboratory in a hospital, and he um, he's like, what goes um, – we're talking about the different colors of tubes that we use to draw blood. And he said something about the red tube, and he said – is there a chemical in it? And I'm like, no, it's just plain. And he's like, well, I'm going to Google it. And I was like, dude, do please do not use your work computer to Google red tube for the love of God. And I'm like, I can't tell you why because we're at work, <laughs> but later I'll tell you. <laughs> so you're a better person than me. I would have been like, let me know what you find. <laughs> no. Because I was like in charge if I had done that, you know, but then I could have played it off like I didn't know either. But then no one would have believed me. They'd be like, yeah, you did it on purpose, Jamie. We know you. We know you. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen your search history. We know you. <laughs> uh, Florida, the one thing that stood out to me too, and I don't remember exactly where, like what place it was. But I went to the fucking dopest restaurant to this day that I've ever been to. Um, these motherfuckers, it was like a buffet thing, right? Right. But they had in the dead center of the seating area, this like little bakery thing where they would make pizza or bread or whatever you wanted. You just go tell them and they'll make it right then and there. That's awesome. And then the side of it was like a fucking ice cream bar. Hell Yeah. I was like, who? Is it a Golden Corral? I think it was, but I didn't want to say golden that shit. Corral, the 
fucking bomb. That's the one I'm, I was certain it was. Oh, it's so the shit. I just love it. Oh, my God. I was certain it was, but I was like, I will probably fuck that up. And Americans would be like, he's a fucking idiot. He doesn't know what no. he's talking about. Um, like, and they're probably yelling at their fucking speakers. It's this place, you dummy. <laughs> if you went to the Golden Corral that is in Orlando, that's the Golden Corral where all the strippers go. Oh, shit. Yeah. Probably was so, Orlando. So, like, late. That's there. They go there to eat before they go to, the, like, the clubs. Yeah. Damn. I mm -hmm. at the wrong time then, but <laughs> um, but that food like I had to do like grocery shopping after the fact, and I was like, this is fucking terrible because I don't want anything. Fuck food! I never want to see food again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just ruin your life eating there, man. But it was so cool because it's like I got to go to like all these stores and get like all this shit that I'll see commercials for as a kid here and whatever that we never had here. Yeah. But we get the commercials for it. So like right. cereals, shit like that. And it's like all these things that I saw forever and I've never had it. It's like, hey, yeah. Oh my God. And then I have it. I'm like, oh, this is just like this shit we have. You know? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's just routine <laughs> without gravy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like kicks. I was like, it's like corn pops. What the fuck's yeah. the difference? You know, like this is not very eventful <laughs> after all. So funny but it was cool you know because yeah. uh and then i went to like this mini golf place it was like mm. out, outdoor so they mm -hmm. actually had actual palm trees like on the fucking yeah place. and just these outdoor speakers just playing like all this reggae shit i was like this is fucking awesome it is awesome i was like i That's, love this yeah stuff is fun did you go to medieval times I didn't. Uh, we oh, have, it's so we, badass. We have it here, too, and I've never gone here either. So. You should go. It's like a wrestling match on horses. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like an independent wrestling match, but they're on horses, and you ha get to eat chicken with your bare hands at the same time. It's wonderful. <laughs> I, I've had neighbors and shit when I was a kid that went. Mm -hmm. and they loved it and i was like yeah. i just never went i don't know why i never had the opportunity or it or, is absolutely worth it yeah uh see now i have to fucking check it out mm -hmm. um but um there's you know also like candy and stuff and like chocolate and shit that we have here that you guys don't have and certain things that we have that you guys don't but then a lot oh. of stuff that you guys have we have it here um or at some point we did and mm -hmm. so um i was telling mick i was like dude when we do that show where we're comparing our countries you know um i should send you a bunch of shit you guys can't get there yeah and have you sit on the show and try it and let me know what you think um he's like that would be so fucking cool that would be fun because we have like ketchup chips you guys don't have that which oh, is that sounds amazing oh they're so good um i actually one time i crushed them and I made, um, I used them to bread, uh, like I took ketchup Pringles and I crushed them and I breaded uh, matzo sticks with them. Ah. It tasted exactly like McDonald's fries with ketchup, just with mozzarella in it. That sounds awesome. It, I'm going to have to, yeah. Okay. I guess I could order it on Amazon or something. Probably. Yeah. I, I, I would imagine so. I don't see mm -hmm. why not. I love some food, man. I'll try anything. Oh, the, the chocolates that we have that you guys don't have, it's like mind blowing. Like we have coffee crisp, which is like, oh, it's like a, a chocolate um, coated wafer that tastes like coffee. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, it's so good. You know what I mean? It's just like this light fucking coffee flavor. It's not overwhelming yeah. and, and, and chocolate. So it's got like a nice mocha flavor and it's a wafer that's like that thick mm -hmm. a thin coating of chocolate on it. It's fucking delicious, dude. That's great. To find out you guys don't have that shit, I'm like, really? Yeah. Fuck. You know. Yeah. Why don't we have coffee flavored chocolate? That's bullshit. You know what do you guys? Absolute not? bullshit. You guys are fucking up. <laughs> I know you can buy like the chocolate covered um, coffee beans. Mm. And like uh, somebody brought a big bag of them, I remember to work one time, and we all like ruined our lives eating them and eating way too many. And so we were all like hyped up, and then we all had to like shit at the same time because like they're like laxative if you eat enough of them. 
and it was a bad day that day. It was a bad day for everybody. <laughs> we had one bathroom. <laughs> oh my God. I have an expression that people find amusing and it's strictly, it's not a Canadian thing. It's just, I'm an idiot thing. Um, <laughs> and it comes from my weird experience and I'll explain it um, where I'll, I'll say somebody shits like a buffalo because <laughs> when I was a kid, we had this place called African Lion Safari uh-huh. where you drive through. Oh, yeah. And it's all these animals. Yeah, First, no, no, you know, yeah, like I have this older cousin. She's three years older than me. We were born the same day, just three years apart. Same month, same day, same birthday, just three years apart. And um, so we grew up together like brother and sister, basically. And my grandparents, who raised me, um, told me one day that we were going there. And we would always see the commercials for it. And it had a stupid little fucking, you know, jingle and all that bullshit. Uh-huh. You know, I get all excited because I'm like, we're going to that fucking place with that stupid song and whatever. So I'd freak out. I'm like, Amy, we're going to a friggin' lion safari. She's like, it's African lion safari, not a friggin' lion safari. um so my uncle is going with us and he's driving and we get up to where the buffalo's at and he has this bag of barbecue chips and he takes one out he rolls the window down and he fucking hands it off to this buffalo that was right up at the window buffalo goes grabs it fucking starts eating it the second the buffalo swallowed it it shit right on the spot and i started cracking the fuck up because i was a little idiot Uh, too yeah um, you know, and so he's laughing because I'm fucking just like tears pouring into my face laughing so fucking mm-hmm. hard. So then I, you know, it just became a thing like shit like a buffalo. <laughs> because it's <laughs> it's you a girl that can shit like a buffalo. <laughs> you a girl that can eat ketchup chips and, and shit like a buffalo. Get you one that can do both. <laughs> that, that's gonna be like a new motivational speech. <laughs> 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 Jesus. <laughs> god damn that's funny oh (laughs) god how long has it been i feel like i've taken up all your goddamn time but this is fucking are you about ready are you done is that your signal no i could go forever i just don't want to fucking keep you if you got shit to do so yeah i have like babies to feed and shit all right so then yeah (laughs) I don't, you know, I usually in cases like this, I just tell my guests, dude, just let me know when you fucking, yeah, yeah, because I could do this all day otherwise because it's fucking hilarious. I've had a great time, man. Oh, me too. I mean, so fucking come back whenever, dude. It, yeah, it'd be so cool because this was a blast. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, definitely. So before you go, then, do you want to plug your, you know, stuff? Yeah. You Absolutely. So on this Friday, May 7th, I'm going to be at Marty's Tap in Sioux City, Iowa, um, opening for uh, Ryan DeVito, which is really cool. And then on Sunday, I've got a Mother's Day show in Sioux Falls at this cool little club called De Click. And it's going to be free wine for all the ladies. So that's going to be a hoot. And I'm a little scared because of the free wine situation, but it's probably going to be more fun than bad. And then... On uh, May 28th, that's a Friday, I've got uh, a Prairie Madness, which is my comedy troupe of all chicks. Um, we're doing a show at Boss's Comedy Club in uh, Sioux Falls, and I've got Nathan Holtz um, opening for us. And actually, he was just accepted into the World Series of Comedy Top 40. So that's pretty badass, and I'm really excited for him and excited that he agreed to do that for us. And then the next day on the 29th, I'll be at Teehees in Des Moines, and... Um, that's going to be pretty cool too. So I've got a lot of stuff coming up. I'm doing really well and I'm excited about it. Anyone that doesn't go to those shows, I will, I will personally punch them in the dick until, <laughs> until they shit like a Buffalo. Shit like a Buffalo. I'm going to make a t-shirt now that says shit like a Buffalo. I'm going to write a whole joke around girls that shit like Buffaloes. Get you a girl who can shit like a Buffalo. And then I'll have like a Buffalo with like some poop or something. That's a whole new merch thing. I'm Avenue. I'm going to take it's Buffalo poop. I'm not even going to fucking ask for royalties. I'm just going to buy one and I'll be content. <laughs> <laughs> I need this in my life. <laughs> Get you a girl who could do both. It's like ketchup chips and Buffalo poop. Right. See, I had a shirt too. Uh, last thought here 
was the last time I had Mick on my show. He sent me a book he wrote about his time working on the set of Nightmare on Elm Street 4. And he wrote something fucking derogatory about me in the cover because that's uh-huh. our relationship. That's what we do. We take the piss out of each other. So I told him I had a rebuttal. And he was like, oh, God, what? And I took my jacket off and I said, this is how I feel every fucking time you come on my show. And I was wearing a shirt that just said, I shaved my balls for this. <laughs> <laughs> so we're even. Um, <laughs> but now I need a shit like a buffalo shirt. So yeah, make, make it happen. Yes, yes. I'll, I'll work on that. I got a guy. I got a shirt guy. I got a guy. I'll do to it. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Thanks so much for coming, man. Yeah, uh, thanks for a- having me and inviting me. I was really excited about it. Oh, anytime, dude. Come back anytime because this was yeah. so much fun. And I need to know more about this goddamn Golden Corral because I've only been there once. And I need the, I need the memories to flood back because I, it was so good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I love some Golden Corral. And there's not one up here. The only thing we have that's like equivalent is we've got like a, a thing called Pizza Ranch. Have you do you have pizza ranches up there? I fucking wish. That and it's sounds very like heaven. similar. But it's like all different kinds of pizza, and then they have like broasted chicken. I don't know if you've ever had broasted chicken. It's like a patented way of like frying and roasting at the same time. That shit is amazing. They can do some fried chicken up here. It is so good. Motherfuckers, man. I, we don't have I that. know. I can tell both of us like food a lot because we're like, God damn it. Why don't I have that food where I am right now? Because right. I'm a fat ass and I want to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I love cooking. So, I mean, you know. Yeah. Oh, God damn. Oh, fuck. What are you doing to me, man? <laughs> <laughs> Making you starving. Now you got the munchies. I think you're going to do shit like a buffalo. (laughs) You've been awesome. Thank you. We definitely got to do this again. Hell yeah, man. Fucking A. Um, So you do what you got to do then. Shit like a buffalo if you need to. Whatever the fuck. Yeah, right. You know, (laughs) I don't want to keep you any longer. (laughs) Yeah, just let me know whatever the thing is already. That way I can share it and uh, get you some more listeners and whatnot. I will not disappoint you with this fucking thing. I'm going to have this set up nice. So that way, oh, it's going to be cool. And uh, there's going to be a surprise in there for you. Okay. I think. All right. (laughs) Yay. (laughs) Trust me. When you see it, you'll shake your head and be like, this guy's a fucking idiot. But (laughs) I'm like, I I love it though. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So your babies don't starve. Yeah, still starve to death. All right. Thanks so much. Let's do this again. And let me know whenever the fuck you want to come back. It's yeah. Peace out, man. Peace out. You know. (laughs) Bye. Have a good one. (laughs) All right, y'all. That was Jamie Tharney. Funny as fuck, in my view. Good friend of mine. Um, I'm so glad that I reached out to her to get her on the show because I love her work. And uh, what comedians do you know just go full on Ric Flair on motherfuckers? You know what I mean? You, you got to value that. You got to appreciate it to some extent. And if you don't, then I hope one day you run into her and she chops you right in the tits. Uh, so watch it, man. Show some respect. You know, fucking. <laughs> She's fucking great. She was funny as hell. We had a great fucking conversation. And I look forward to talking to her again. Down the road, we'll get her back on the show and see what she's been up to and what kind of gigs she's done. And maybe we'll get some horror stories out of her because, you know, when you do stand-up comedy, I'm sure you've seen enough people fucking bomb. And it's got to be horrific at the time. But you can look back at it and just be like, heh, that sucked. (laughs) So I'm sure she's seen a few people go that route and... um, Maybe we'll get some stories out of that shit, because I'm sure sometimes it happens in an entertaining sort of way. So, I look forward to bringing her back. I had a great time talking to her. Another show that could have gone on forever, but, you know, people have shit to do, and it is what it is. But, you know, they can't all be fucking Joe Rogan long four-hour shows, and uh, thank God for that, because sometimes we got fucking things that need tending to, like editing and all this other crap, so... You know, in business and all that fun shit. And in her case, she had babies to feed. 
and uh, you know that's life right so let's bring her back when we can and I hope you enjoyed that shit because it was random it was fucking funny to us and uh, you know I look forward to doing it again check it out uh, when we bring her back and hopefully show some love to her videos because she's a funny chick man Anyways, I'll catch your asses down the road. Thanks for checking out the show.